Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing a collaboration. I am so excited to be collaborating with Becca from Becca's Music Room. So we are both going to be sharing some lesson ideas for jazz. So definitely check her out at the end of this video. Pop on over because she's gonna be sharing three more lesson ideas with you today. I'm so excited, let's get into it. First up is take five, um, a beanbag composition. So this is gonna definitely be for your fourth, fifth, sixth grade students. This piece of music is in five, it's in five, four, which is kind of fun to talk to your students about that, how we can not just only be in two, four, three, four, four, four that we're so used to. So the first day of this lesson would be playing this video for them. This is from an ORF level one class. They do a certain pattern to take five. And so I would share that with them. Um, obviously right now with the passing, it may not be super COVID friendly. So if you're not wanting to do that, maybe you could slightly vary it where it's not passing um, or they're more of like a toss to themselves. So variation of that pattern. Then the second lesson is gonna be them creating their own. So they're gonna create their own pattern. You could do it in small groups, you could do it by themselves. Um, but they have, tell them they have five beats, right? Five beats and each beat needs to be some type of movement with your beanbag. Also, just make sure some students had a really hard time they'd be like that they would think one bead would be toss and catch and it, or tossing it to their partner or something like that and I'm like really it's second it's two beads because it's toss and then you catching it that's two beads so just making sure students really got creative with how they tossed it I even had a group uh, I think it was four students and they decided that like Two of them would pass to each other and then the other two would pass with each other. Um, but they did it at different times so they didn't collide. It was the coolest thing ever. And it was like these little diagonals across the circle. So students get really creative with it. It's amazing what they come up with. Um, and I think it, it still can be done this year, even though we can't do as much passing and things like that, that it still, still could be a really creative outlet for them, creating their own pattern, even if it's by themselves. Second lesson idea I have for you guys is about Charlie Parker. So Charlie Parker um, is gonna be three lessons total. Uh, and also Shayla's, uh, I'm, this is not my lesson, this is my amazing husband's lesson, so I can't take too much credit for it, but I'm gonna share it with you guys because I thought it was really good. So uh, first lesson is gonna be talking about Charlie Parker, listening to his book, and I will put a link below to a video that I love because the book is kind of set to um, a night in Tunisia, and so there's some music that's featured um, from Charlie Parker, and it gives a really good background, not only with the book, but also listening to the music. So then after that, you're gonna, second lesson is gonna be a little like orf instrument piece. And so you're gonna take that, Charlie Parker played bebop, Charlie Parker played saxophone, the music has sounded like bebop, never leave your cat alone. That part, you're gonna take that little section and you're going to add in some instruments. And so we have an ostrano with skirts, with skirts, or ta a uh, ta a uh, with skirts with skirts. So that's just gonna be um, C, C pentatonic, they could play, you know, C, 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 G, um, C, E, whatever they wanna play in the pentatonic for that with skirts, with skirts. Charlie Parker play bebop, Charlie Parker play saxophone, and so on and so forth. Okay, then you also have never leave your cat, never leave your cat. And that's going to be never leave your cat is going to be on an egg shaker. Never leave your cat. Never leave your cat. Never leave your cat. Never leave your cat. And then you also can even have the added in a little meow part. So never leave your cat. Meow. Never leave your cat. Meow. Which could be a metal. It could be a drum. It could be up to you on what you want that meow to be or if you want to go for it. It's a little tricky with the timing. So that's going to be your second lesson. The third lesson is where you're going to bridge sports and music into football scat. And so you are going to play a quick little video, again, will be linked below for you guys, about what scatting is. And then you are going to give your students a list of different football teams. And so they're gonna pick four football teams that they like. Let's just say their first one is Green Bay Packers. They need to figure out how many syllables are in Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers, four. So then they're gonna to go to a little word bank 
of different scatting words that they can use to fill up those four syllables. And just making sure that as you are going through, reminding students that as musicians, we love repetition, we love it. Sometimes you need to make sure you can actually say something. And if you have you know, too much differences, um, it's really hard. So repetition, we like it. So let's say that they do bop say. So bop and say, and they repeat it twice. Bop say, bop say. So instead of Green Bay Packers, they do bop say, bop say. And then they go on to the next one, Arizona Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals. Seven. So they have to do seven syllables to create their next scat line and third line and fourth line and so forth. So until they have four lines of different scatting patterns that they can perform. So then what you do is if you're feeling really fancy, you could take even like the ORF piece that we learned the second lesson and have that be the A section and then everyone um, different teams or different groups perform their B section or you know their different section with a rondo um, with that or as we and um, Kevin were talking about the orth piece is a little tricky trying to get all of that so really you could just have the kids chant Charlie Parker play bebop Charlie Parker play saxophone bend the sound like bebop never leave your cat alone and then, then they go into bopsy bopsy da, 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 whatever they do okay so that is the charlie parker uh three lesson idea actually three lessons into one but like a little mini unit on him my third lesson idea is another little three mini <laughs> mini unit i just i love little mini units i don't know what it is i love a theme and i want to like stick to it but anyway i was on trombone shorty so trombone shorty first of all has amazing music if you have not listened like i was like wow i just have not heard a trombone played like that. Like it's pretty awesome. So the first lesson is listening to a story. There's some really good read alouds out there on YouTube. And so we listened to one of them and even I had a third grade class like clap after. They were so inspired by Trombone Shorty. So that's the first lesson. The second lesson, you are going to do a move it. So there's these move it things. I'll link them for you guys um, to Hurricane Season by Trombone Shorty. And the kids will probably, for the most part, recognize that piece of music. They, you do a little bit of this. You do a little bit of a grapevine and a clap and a turn. Uh, it's pretty fun, but just getting them to start to engage with the music. And then the third lesson, um, you are going to use uh, Mrs. Dunk. She is, I will link her below. She's on Instagram and on Teacher Pay Teachers, and she has a resource where she took, you know, phrases from the book um, and made these little rhythm cards that you can use with the kids. So the kids will pick four of them. They will create their own body percussion, um, and it's really fun for them to perform it after. Oh, and I forgot to in that first lesson with Charlie Parker, making sure that you play after where you're at and the, kid, the kids get to see him actually in real life after reading the book. And I think that is just such an important bridge of like, this is a real person. Here he is. You know, this was his book about his story and his life. And here he is actually playing up on a stage. And then he's, you know, still alive today. I think sometimes we, you know, not that's a bad thing, but we talk about a lot of musicians that have passed away. And so it's really cool when we talk about someone that's still living today and be like, and yeah, here, here's this person today playing his or her music. And that is it, you guys. Three lesson ideas for this Jazz Appreciation Month. Oh, that was hard to say. <laughs> Jazz Appreciation Month. Um, I hope that you hop over to Becca's um, music room and check out her video. I know that she shares such valuable uh, lesson ideas and videos over there. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.